Are you looking to build some forearm size? Well, let me put on my hat of plus five looks maxing and let's get into it. Here are the best forearm exercises to build size according to the science. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here today, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching and real mewing enjoyer, as you can tell. I've been training my forearms for a few years. I've also been researching how to lift and how to grow muscle for a few years. So based on both my own personal experience and my knowledge as a sports scientist, here's what I think are the best forearm exercises. Before we actually go into those, we need to understand what the forearms actually do if we want to target them. The forearms are actually pretty complicated. Ultimately, they are responsible for moving your hands around, so they get pretty complicated. Your hands are some of the coolest things ever. You can do a lot of things with hands, you hear me? But as far as our own purposes go, there's three muscle groups we need to be aware of. The first one is the finger flexors. As the name entails, these are responsible for flexing your fingers, so going like this essentially. Second, we have the wrist flexors, which essentially just flex your wrist. Importantly, these are going to be the meat and potatoes of our form training, and that is because they're twice as big as the next muscle group, which is the wrist extensors. The wrist extensors, as you might expect, do wrist extension. However, as I mentioned, these are about half the size of the wrist flexors collectively. So if you only train one forearm muscle, it should be the wrist flexors. As I mentioned earlier, the forearm is a really complicated set of muscles. Your hands do a lot of things, but for our purposes, really, we can break down these three muscle groups I mentioned into two kind of exercise categories. One will be wrist flexion exercises, where you're also flexing the fingers, and the other is wrist extension exercises. With just these two categories of exercises, we'll have effectively targeted a lot of the forearm musculature at once. Or at the very least, all of the musculature that is big enough for us to really care about aesthetically. Importantly, some of your wrist flexor muscles, like the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus, are both wrist flexors and also finger flexors. Or if you want a more complicated science word for your day to day, metacorpophalangeal flexors. Nailed it. Now, one implication of this anatomy where the wrist flexors are often also finger flexors is that to maximize the stretch on the wrist flexors, we also want to fully extend the fingers at the bottom of wrist curls to get a deeper stretch on some of the biggest four muscles namely the wrist flexors. Unfortunately, as you might expect, there aren't really many studies out there directly looking at form hypertrophy. So, in fact, that is a PhD project for anyone out there interested in looking at getting jacked. But in the meantime, we can rely on evidence-based principles to still inform our programming when training the forearms. And on that note, what do we look for in a good forearm exercise? Well, in the absence of any direct studies, we look for the same things that we do in any good muscle growth exercise. In here's what the criteria that make up a good exercise are. Editor, pull up the optimal exercise checklist. Please, editor. Come on, man. I just asked you to pull up the checklist. Please don't, don't do this to me, bro. Please. The first criteria of a good exercise is that you target one of the primary functions of the muscle we're trying to target. In this case, that is either wrist flexion or wrist extension, depending on what you're targeting. The second criterion for a good exercise is that the target muscle group should be the limiting factor or very close to it. In something like a farmer's walk, the chances of the forearms being the limiting factor are a little bit lower on account of the traps potentially giving out first or any other number of muscle groups. Additionally, farmer's walks are also isometric holds, which may not be ideal for hypertrophy. Next, whatever exercise we do pick should be stretch friendly. And there are three components that go into this. The first is that it should place the target muscle into that lengthened position that is likely beneficial for growth. The second is that in that position, there should be plenty of tension on the muscle. And the final one is that the exercise would ideally be length and partial friendly. Length and partials is essentially when you perform partial repetitions in the stretched aspect of a movement. For example, in a wrist curl, that would be just the bottom half of the movement. Why is an exercise being length and partial friendly potentially important? Well, we now have five studies in total comparing length and partials to a full range of motion, with four finding better hypertrophy following length and partials as compared to a full range of motion. We also have around eight studies comparing partials at different muscle lengths, around five studies comparing isometric holds at different muscle lengths. We have a couple studies comparing seated calf raises to standing calf raises. And broadly speaking, this collection of studies does suggest that lengthened training usually leads to more hypertrophy 
compared to shortened training. And so, while I don't have a ton of direct evidence yet comparing length and partials to full range of motion, if we can incorporate it, it may just give us more growth. Next up, whatever exercise we pick would ideally not be actually loaded. That is to say, there wouldn't be much load on the spine. And that's where an exercise like the farmer's walk also kind of fails in comparison to like a wrist curl. A farmer's walk does absolutely train the forearms, but it does also fatigue you overall with the loads being used being much larger than they would be in a wrist curl and there being a much greater degree of stabilization involved all around. And so a farmer's walk will in all likelihood be quite substantially more fatiguing compared to a wrist curl but for not much additional direct forearm stimulus. There are a couple of bonus points that you may want to consider in your exercise selection. The first is if you're pressed for time, pick exercises that are time efficient. Generally, exercises involving dumbbells and stack loaded machines will be a lot more time efficient than barbells or plate loaded machines. Indeed, dumbbells and stack loaded machines or even cables are essentially just plug and play. You set up the weight and you get going. And so these exercises can be a bit more time efficient, all else being equal. The second bonus factor is micro loadability, or essentially what is the smallest increment you can adjust the load by relative to how much absolute load you're using. Essentially, if it's very micro loadable, you can easily progress weight week to week and not be constrained to just adding reps week to week. And this is where exercises like the dumbbell wrist curl may not be quite ideal, in the sense that you're unlikely to be able to jump five pounds on each dumbbell each week, you will have to resort to reps. It's not a huge deal for hypertrophy, as we have one study by Plotkin and colleagues showing similar hypertrophy, whether progressing via load or via reps, but it is something to consider. All right, based on all of these criteria for determining what the best exercise is and on the anatomy of the forearms, what do I think are the best forearm exercises? As I mentioned earlier, I think it makes sense to break it down into two categories, wrist flexors slash finger flexors and wrist extensors. Here's the best exercise for each category. For the wrist flexors and finger flexors, we have the dumbbell wrist curl or the barbell wrist curl. And let me break down why that's the best pick for forearm hypertrophy, in my opinion. First up, compared to something like a farmer's walk, this is non-actually loaded. With the forearms essentially being the only moving part here, it is also overwhelmingly likely that the target muscle is going to be the limiting factor and going to be pushed sufficiently close to failure to maximize muscle growth. The big differentiating factor between a bench wrist curl and a standing wrist curl is that the bench wrist curl actually gets you a deeper stretch under tension. And so the bench wrist curl with dumbbells or with a barbell is likely a better option for muscle growth compared to the standing wrist curl. Because it allows you to both extend the fingers fully and extend the wrist fully, it targets some of the primary functions of the biggest muscles in the forearm. Why the dumbbell wrist curl over the barbell wrist curl? Well, for a couple reasons. One, as I mentioned earlier, it is likely a little bit more time efficient because it's essentially just plug and play. You grab the dumbbells and you get going. And the second reason is that because of the freedom the dumbbells allow you, you're not locked in to a high degree of supination. That can be uncomfortable in my limited experience for some people's wrists. Ultimately, give both of these a try and see which one you prefer, but I do think that dumbbells, on average, are just a bit more flexible. But ultimately, dumbbells are no less injurious than barbells inherently. It is just my personal experience and my coaching experience that people typically experience less pain with dumbbells when they do experience pain with a barbell variation. So the barbell bench wrist curl is by no means a bad exercise and you can absolutely use it within your routine to really good effect. And the single best exercise for the wrist extensors, which again, are about a half the size of the wrist flexors. So only really train these if you want to maximize the size of your forearms, looks maxing. The best exercise for those, in my opinion, is the dumbbell wrist extension on the bench for the same reasons as the dumbbell wrist curl being a good exercise for the wrist flexors. This exercise allows you to get a full stretch. It's time efficient by virtue of using dumbbells. You're not locked into full on pronation. You have a bit more freedom. And importantly, it also makes for a really easy superset with the dumbbell bench wrist curl. You can essentially just grab another pair of dumbbells or even the same pair of dumbbells by going a little bit higher in reps on the wrist curls and a little bit lower in reps on the wrist extensions, you'll typically find you're using pretty similar loads. Most people can wrist curl more than they can wrist extend. Equally, if you want to use a barbell, the barbell bench wrist extension is a great option. Again, I wouldn't recommend the standing variation because you are missing out on that loaded stretch. There are two more things I would like to say to close out this video. First, are there other forearm exercises out there? Yes. Are there other muscle groups that we may not have trained with just these two exercises? Yes. But I also think that at some point you are running into severely diminishing returns. 
If you want to train your forearms, you're likely aware of this. The forearms aren't the biggest muscle group on the body, they do not make the biggest impact on your overall physique, and so personally, I wouldn't go anywhere past doing wrist extensions. At that point, you're already targeting such a small portion of your musculature that your returns have diminished severely. But ultimately, you do you. And the second thing I would like to say in closing is that if you enjoyed this video but want more depth on forearm training, consider checking out the Strong by Science article on the forearms in the description below. It's got a lot of information on the anatomy, including smaller muscle groups that you may be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, leave a comment down below letting me know if you enjoyed the video, if there are any other muscle groups you would like to see me cover. If you would like to get coaching by me, check out the link above. And with all that being said, have a phenomenal day and I will see you guys, my subscribers, in that next one. Peace. All right, are the cameras off? I'm gonna go get back to my uh, routine of mewing now. See you later.